the two people that listen to this Yay! podcast. Whoa! Welcome. Here, finally. I have a sponsor. It's okay. very short. Take, take it away, sponsor. Okay, tonight's game is brought to you by Technical Difficulties. Nice. I've used their <laughs> services many times. <laughs> They have a zero to five stars on Google. Can't recommend them. <laughs> but they, they, people still use them. Would not so, recommend. The next time your boss wants you to do something last minute, just remember technical difficulties. Back to you, Jared. Cool. Perfect. Thanks, Cool. Well, a quick recap from last time. From what I can remember, I didn't actually read, I didn't watch the video. But you guys. I'm confused. It was right after you. Ca- yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, is it too low? Is it too low? Is that it's very it's really funny sounding. It's very bassy. It's like you're not yourself. You sound like you're talking in a deep voice. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I have a deep voice. Like, totally. <laughs> like, I have oh, a deep voice. Oh my gosh, it was so oh, much deeper than gosh. like normal. <laughs> and it was just like so dreamy. And this is going to uh-huh. be on the recording. This is going to be so much fun to listen back to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well now that's it's back to fifty, so it shouldn't be should be the normal sounding. Meme. Yeah, you sound normal now. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> He's okay. very slowly drop it over the course of the game. <laughs> kind of freaking. By the end, it'll be like, down to a one. What's happening? <laughs> Jared has a cold. <laughs> it is throat. Yeah, I couldn't tell if you just had. Yeah. <laughs> No, that that was deeper than than when he has a cold. We've played when he's had a cold. Deep. Cool. Uh, yeah, so last time, it was a session right after you cast the wish. Um, you left the Leprechaun and started your way back to Tirim. And by Tirim, I mean Theonon. On your way down, oh, you met yeah, Crazy Larry. Happened. You met a guy named Crazy Larry. And he was completely mad. And he tried to run away and escape. He tried to attack Green Skull. And Green Skull knocked him out a couple of times. Until they finally finally decided that you need to take him back to to Siunon. On the walk pack, um, Green Skull changed his name to Sparta. On your way, as you approached Siunon with the drugged Carl draped over your draped over Sparta's shoulder. Very. You ran into Farmer Hecuba. What? You just changed the NPC's name from Larry to Carl. Mid recap. No, it was Carl. I tell it was Carl. Okay. That's what I've written down. I swear it was Carl. I'm pretty sure it was, but you called him Larry earlier in the recap. That's all I'm getting at. Well, I meant Carl, because crazy Carl from Vibernet. Crazy car. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got the name. <clears throat> Anyways. Names Carl. have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> right. Um, so walking down Larry. You <laughs> you make it to the border of Sigunan and you found Farmer Hecuba who killed a cow and then it came back alive and so he freaked out and then you all came back to <clears throat> To help him kill it, and Sparta violently viscerated it to make sure it stayed dead. And then you all went on to the inn, I believe, and you talked with um, Ezra Hardin for a little bit. Or half of you did, and Sparta went to go to the church. Yeah, I don't think I've made it to the inn yet. Okay. They came with me. Um, Yeah. At one point, you talked to Ezra Harden to report to report everything you had, and then you decided that to go well, well, your I separate think that ways. Was over the, I think that was over the stones. Oh, yeah, probably it was. Okay, that's how we always Perfect. communicate with us, all right? Not always. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're in the if you're in the city, he usually is there. Either way, we split um, up. Yeah, split up, and then that's where pretty much where we ended. At Sparta went to go to the to the monastery. Um, we talked to the talked to the abbot and found out more about the players. And we and cured the abbot was able Carl to heal insanity yep, his dementia. And then, and then we were, were on your way back. We were going to take him to the camp. Exactly. 
Cool. So that's where we're going to start, but we're going to start off with um, Crumb, because Crumb went off to go pick up his cloak, and Fifth and Elba went to go check on things at their banner. Tyrell, where did you go? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he stayed as a gargoyle. <laughs> where, though? At the camp. Yeah, so who are you going to end up following, Kyrell? Quick decision. Ah, uh, the first one. I'll give yeah, you the choice yeah. between Fifth and Crumb. Ah, uh, Crumb. Okay. So Crumb and Never, um split off from the group to go find the um, artificer that was working on Crumb's cloak. Uh, you guys walk through the city, and you are able to eventually retrace your steps back to where the artificer was, and you make it to the front door of the artificer's shop. I didn't prepay for the service, right? Or did I? I don't think I did. Did I? I don't know if you did. I can't remember. I don't think I... I think I dropped it off. I don't think I prepaid. Yeah, I don't think you did either. Well, I don't. I we'll go with that that you didn't. Cause I don't remember. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, uh, you get to the door, and I open the door. Hello. Um, you, you can see from inside the shop the, the dragonborn woman is there and I said, oh, yes, hello I've been waiting for you Yeah, I'm here for my uh, my cape Oh, yes, don't you get it done I did, I have it right here I think you'll be pleased with the results, we were able to get it the way you wanted it Alright, and she goes back to the the back and she pulls out your cloak and here you go it's just just as this just as you left it other than the modifications that we made for you well, does she it hands it over any different well it does of course it's not going to look different if you remember we we cast some enchantments oh yeah put it on i put the cloak on and I make sure that my uh, root of number numbing is uh, still visible. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I put the co- I put the cape on. Perfect. Now what? <clears throat> I don't feel any stronger right. or smarter. Well. Maybe well, you're not smarter. supposed to feel. You're not supposed to feel smarter. It's oh, if am you, I more stealthy? Uh, no, but if you say the, if you say the magical word that I will tell you, then the then the wolf's heads will come alive and start to growl. The magical word that I will tell you. Yes. Nothing happened. In fact, it's customizable. What word would you like to have? Oh. I get to pick a word. You get to pick the word. Hmm. Is it any word that I say or anyone near me says it? Any word that the wearer of the cloak says. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hey, Never, what word should I pick? Hmm. That is a good question. Well, Merchant, what do you think I should pick? Well, you want something that will inspire fear amongst your enemies, so I'd probably say, like, Pumpkin. Pumpernickel. Pumpkin, oh. Or that's a good one. Squash. No. How about... How about... Pumpkin squash. How about just squash? That's that's a good one. You want that? 
Yeah. All right. And she walks up and she kind of weaves some magic in her hand. And she casts a, a spell into her breath. There you go. If you happen to cast, if you happen to say the word squash, then the, cl- the wolf has will come alive. Okay. And I say squash. Squash. Um, so when that happens, the, the larger head of the two wolf's heads just makes this tremendously loud growl, like super ferocious, like that, like kind of like the snarl <laughs> sound that like wolves make. And it's loud. It's just, since you're inside of the room, it's really, really loud. And it sounds very intimidating. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, so can I come back to you? And <laughs> if I decide I want to change the word later, does that sound okay? She thinks about it for a second. Yeah, that should be all right. If, you, if you'd like you to do that, we can do that. Ask the spell again, right? Yes, that, should be, that shouldn't be too difficult. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, how much do I owe you for this service? I believe we said 500 gold for, for the first round. Okay. And I reach into my bag and say, you say five gold? That's what you said? And she, she looks up at you and starts to think for a second. I... I I think we said um, 50,000, right? That sounds right. And I reach in and I pull out three gold coins and say, here is 47,000 gold. <coughs> and then she, she looks kind of confused and looks down at the, the coins for a second. And yep, yep, that, that, that seems right. Awesome. So I hand over th- the three coins. Perfect. That sounds like a good deal. Good, good. Pleasure doing business with you. You did great. I'll tell all my friends to come by. And, and I guess I'll come back at another time for those other enchantments. Perfect. Um, before you leave, um, do you happen to have that dragon scale? Would I, would I be able to hold, see it again? Uh, yeah, the, yep, I hold it up. See? Can I can I hold it? Ooh, what are you gonna do with it? I, I just I, I would just like to hold it just for a second. It's precious to me. I'll give it right back. I promise. Can I do a something check? Is it insight? Yeah, do do an insight check. Oh, put out my dice. <laughs> All right. Insight. Oh, dirty 20. Nice. Um, she looks sincere that she will give it back, but you do see kind of a maniacal kind of grint, like a a desperate longing and a need in her eye as she is barely holding on waiting for your response. Let's see here. If I remember right, I we took off one scale, the one that some that talks to Armand, Armand, and uh, left the other one on. Is that right? Or did I take both of the scales off? I think there was just one that we put on there. I so thought it was I just had the one them. that you. As like one on each bicep. That's what I have in my notes. And one of them is the summoning one. Or not summoning, but communication. Yeah, one. the communication one. Um I that sounds right. I don't remember. So I have, I have two dragons. I'll, go with, I'll go with what you have you on your notes. Yeah. And one of them is enchanted. Yeah. 
that so with I don't, I don't I don't think I took both of them off. I think I just took the one off. Yeah, right? you just took the one that was commu- the communication one. So she knows that the one that you took out is the one that can communicate with our mom. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Something seems suspicious about the way you want to touch the scale. I I I just need to I just need to talk to him. Just just one more time, please. One more time? Please, just let me speak to him one more time, and then I'll give you the scale right back. When did you talk to him before? The last time I held the scale. Did I, I was able to communicate with him. Yes. I don't remember this. And then she looks up in the air. How often does he remember things? Honestly, I cannot remember. (laughs) (laughs) Well, trust me. Trust me, Mr. Crumb. Uh, Please, I... How about this? You you let me hold it one more time, and your next enchantment will be, I'll give you a good discount. And she looks, she looks right up into your face in full view of your pin. I'll give you an awesome discount, only 100,000 mi- millions. I don't know about that. Never, what um, do you think? What does Sir Lanford think about all this? Well, let me ask him. Sir Lanford, uh, he says that he better not tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, I better not tell you. Yep, what Sir Lanford said. But what do you say, Crumb? Please, I well, need it. I better it. not tell you. <laughs> Okay, well then just give it to me then. That's the answer. Give it. But it's my scale from my friend. But you didn't... He's my friend now too. Please! Well, if you're his friend, he should have given you your own scale. (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) At this point, you're kind of a dragon too. Why don't you just grab one of your own scales and talk to him? (laughs) (laughs) At this point, she's starting to get frustrated and then... She starts to desperately look around you. Please, just just give it to us. Just give it to us. We're just for a second, precious. Mm. You don't seem like you're so happy anymore. <laughs> I pull out my wand of smiles and ca- flick it at her. <laughs> <laughs> you see a very pained face. Her, her, her facial expression is very, very pained as she like has this gross smile that's forced onto her lips while her eye you got out uh, where well pain uh, smile while, yeah um yeah so yeah it's it's kind of a weird thing you see she has got a a pain smile on her face as she does not want to smile but she's forced to by your spell but her eyes look crazy and then she kind of like, she doesn't make a move at you, but she kind of makes like a sound like Bilbo Baggins when he goes for the ring, just a, ah, please give it, please. I need it. I need, I've never seen another dragon before in my life. Please. I thought you said you talked to him already. This is confusing. Oh, all right. Look, here's what I can do. I reach into my pocket and I pull out a little bit of squash and I say, have some squash. <laughs> uh all of a sudden the the it becomes kind of a cacophony of this as your your wolves kick in and just kind of drown out anything she says and she just kind of kind of pushes your hand away until after the voices after the wolves die down and she kind of kind of backs away fine then get out I'm sure you don't want any get out Leave us. Okay. Uh, Never, we should probably head out. Oh, oh, wait. Do you sell any potions here? I do. Do you know what the cost is? (laughs) How much is the cost? 
Let me hold your dragon scale. <laughs> I reach into my <laughs> coin pouch and pull out two gold coin. How about 2,000 golds? <laughs> no. Only the dragon scale for a potion. That's my only offer. That's a lot of... That's that's expensive. And... And uh, I can't tell you right now anyway. But all right, let's go, Navarre. <laughs> all right, Maybe so we can go good. find right. another potion shop. Perhaps okay. that would be the best. <laughs> All right. Um, Have a nice start, day, dragon lady. She looks at you and just kind of scowls angrily. You've made an enemy of me this day, Mr. Cromthorn. An enemy? But you're my friend. <sighs> Get out. And as you turn to leave, um, you see a rat that just happens to run past you inside of the shop. And she notices it, and then tries to like run up and like, oh, quick, we gotta kill it before it escapes. What's wrong with the rat? They're they're vermin, and she casts a like a levitating spell, and she walks up and she grabs the rat, and like she grabs it by the tail and just like slams it against the wall so that it so that it dies, and she drops it on the ground. <sighs> If you don't kill them fast, then they'll spawn, they'll reproduce, and then they'll be everywhere. Like fishermen, I understand. <laughs> uh, I, so, I, something like that. Just, just, just leave. All right. Sounds good. Have a nice day. All right. And then as you walk out, you notice that the rat comes back up alive and starts to kind of walk around. And she looks down. What is this? What have you done? I didn't do anything. Then why is the rat alive? I can't, I can't. And she walks up and she pulls out a dagger and just like starts stabbing the crap out of the rat until it finally dies. Maybe and then she, she had throws it out. Squash. <laughs> Get out! And she screams as your, your wolves start to kick in. Get out of here! I don't want you here anymore! And she... Pushes you out the best she can to try and force you out of her shop. Okay. Well, uh, bye. <clears throat> Goodbye. And she goes and she slams the door behind you. Well, that was weird, Nevair. What do you think of that whole thing? I think that she might be possessed by something. Mm. Did not seem very lovely. That is for certain. Yeah, she seemed to be hiding something. Maybe magic rats or something. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, we should probably go. I need I need some potions. We should go find a potion vendor. That sounds perfectly good to me. Do you know where they're at? I mean, we're at the marketplace, right? DM. Yeah. Yeah. So is it hard to identify which shop would be selling potions? No. You'd be able to find another potion pretty easily. All right. A potion shop. You good, Navarre, if we run over there real quick for some potions? And that seems perfectly fine with me, if you are All needing right. to do that. So I head over to the potion shop and enter into the shop. Okay. Hello. Um, you see there's a, another tabaxi. Well, not another one, but you see a tabaxi that's the owner of the shop, and Yes, hello. What can I do for you? Um. Hey, Never. Yes. It's a kitty. Remember, I'm allergic to kitties. Oh, you are. Yeah. And my nose starts getting all stuffy. My eyes are starting to water being in the shop. I need to buy some potions, but I'm allergic to kittens. Well, if we don't have any kittens here, there's just me. Yes, that's you. <laughs> I, I'm not a kitten, sir. I am a tabaxi. Tomato, potato. <clears throat> I'm allergic to you. I'm sorry. 
Um, uh, okay. I need some potions. What kind of potions do you need? How about you stand over there and I'll tell you what you need. And then. What I need. What, no, no, what do you need? Oh, what I sir? need. Oh. Um, health potions. Very well. Yeah. We have plenty of health potions. What would you like? Uh, the good ones. What do you have that are good ones? We have the standard variety of health potions. We have regular health potions. We've got greater health potions. And we have superior health potions. Which one's better? Well, the superior potion, of course. How much is that? And how many do you have? Well, we only have one of the one of the superior, and that's going to cost you quite a bit, as it's, it is fairly rare. You don't see them very often. It'll cost you two hundred gold pieces. Okay, so I'll take that. And what are the other health potions you have? We have we have two more great. We have two greater greater healing potions, and I believe we've got four healing potions in stock. Yeah, probably everyone in our party needs one. I'll take all of them. Um, very well. And uh, what other potions do you have? Um, well, we have a we have a couple of poison potions. We have we have a a potion of speed and a potion of sleep. Uh, add add the potion of speed and sleep too. Oh, but well. I don't want any poison potions. And unless, hey, Never, do you need any poison potions? I do not believe I need them. I can create poison myself. You can poison yourself? That's not very healthy. I can create poison myself. You can create poison on yourself. Close enough, yes. Okay. So All you right. don't need any poison potions. I do not believe so, no. So you said that there's a super potion. A superior potion, two greater potions, and a, and a regular potion. Four regular potions. And a speed and a sleep. A speed and a sleep potion. Do you have any, like, smoking potions? Make smoke. I'm afraid that we do not. Oh, okay. Well, how much for all those potions? For all of those, I'll give you a good deal of a thousand potions. Of a thousand gold. Alright, I, I, I go and plug my nose, so I'm talking nasally. And I step forward so that my brooch is showing. And I reach into my bag and I pull out. Um, hold on, where's my, my inventory? I pull out, you said a thousand gold? Yes. All right. And I pull out five gold pieces. Here's Here's 2,000 gold pieces. I'm up. paying you extra as a tip. Oh, um, that seems fair, but I only see, I only see four gold pieces here. Are you sure? And I, I kind of shuffle them around in my hand, and I'm like, one, two, three... <coughs> he looks down. Twelve hundred. Oh, now there's only now. Now I now I see two of them. Now I see two. Co yeah, there's there's two gold now. I think we. I think the agreed upon price was. I, I, we said. I think we said thirty, didn't we? Oh, yeah, I think you're right. That sounds so right. So I reach into my bag and I pull out another five gold. So I have. I'm holding ten. 
I'm like, there. And I put an extra three as a tip. <laughs> um, and he, he kind of sits there and like kind of strokes his, like, as if he this would have a, a good goatee. deal. He, look, he, he, he looks down. <clears throat> uh, that that scene may seem right. Um, let's see. And he, he, he tries to like kind of count and thinks about it for a second. Okay. 50, fa- 50, 50 fil- million 40 more, and I think we're good. 50 million 40 more, and I reach and I open up my coin purse and I'm staring inside it. 1, 2, 30, 76, 1,000, 40, 20. And I pull out three more coins and I add it to the pile. There. He goes and grabs a, agreed. He, he grabs a handful and looks at it. Oh, you gave me too much. And he puts two back in your hand. Oh, you're probably right. Okay. Deal. <laughs> um, perfect. It's a pleasure doing business with you. And then and he goes you. and he hands you all the potions. <laughs> and I hand him 11 gold. <laughs> well, have a nice day. And we Thank walk you. away and leave the shop. All right. Where were we meeting the rest of the party, Navarre? Do you remember where we're going? We're going back to the inn. I, the I tavern. Thought, I thought you would remember. Yeah, I always remember. Going to the tavern. That's where we're going. Sounds okay. good. Okay. <laughs> so we head that right. way. Perfect. Um, I will now go over to fifth. As you are heading back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you, you and Elva walk over to the to your manor. And as you, you walk up, you're greeted by several of your servants. And then once you kind of get in and get settled in a little bit after your, after your trip, then your trusty, faithful servant, Howard Goshock, comes up to you. Well, hello, Sir, Sir Feith. Welcome. Welcome back. How was your trip? Uh, uh, good. Thank you. Uh, excellent. I, I assume you're here to, to check up on things to make sure that everything is running smoothly. Is there anything specific you would like to know? Uh, why don't you give me a summary on what's, how things are since we've we, we were gone. Oh, well, things have been very, very eventful. We are, we are about ready for your, your inauguration, uh, how you say, your ceremony to become the Lord. You, if you can make it today to the town hall, then you, I believe they are in session. They will be able to do everything they need to, so you can become the official Lord. Wonderful. Um, I also believe that Things are moving quite nicely with, with all of your investments and with everything else. There's nothing too concerning other than there was something that maybe you can handle. Something in the, uh, in the cooks in the kitchens are having some problems with the food or something. Oh. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but maybe you can handle it. Uh... <laughs> Okay, I. What 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 kind of I, trouble? Well, I that's, that's very strange. They say something about something about the 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 animals aren't dying the way they're supposed to, or something. I I don't understand. We we tried talking oh. to them, but they don't. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, it's the, the... ah yes. <laughs> he remembers the cow now. Uh, I will go in and, and see. I will go and see about this. Thank you. Right. And and what Perfect. about the manner I, I had you briefly look into before we left? Oh yes. Ah, uh, there there have been some developments. It, it does look as if we, what we have talked about, is true. There is some sort of discrepancy. 
we we are not uh, sure exactly what it is, but there is definitely something something wrong. We will have to talk to someone at the at the town hall to possibly get more information discreetly, of course. Of course. Uh, of course. But I will do I will do what I can. And if you can handle if if you go and handle yourself at the town hall today, get the, the ceremony taken care of, then I will do what I can to give you a full report as fast as possible. What was his name again? Goshawk? Yeah. Howard uh, Goshawk. Th- thank you, Goshawk. Uh, I'll oh. leave you to it then. Uh, I'll, I'll report you. to the town hall and at my earliest convenience. Very well. And then he gives a slight bow to you and a bow to Elva and then he walks off. Uh, so then I guess this Faith will turn to Elaba and be like, uh, how long has Goshawk worked for the, um, for... He's been, a, he's been in the family for years. Been as long as I can remember, it's been at least, he's been with us for at least 10 years or more. Uh, so the discrepancies that Fifth would have found, would they have lasted? That's what I mean, okay, maybe it's been that, okay. How long have discrepancies been going on, uh, based on the findings? Like, um, love that. We'll have to get back on that one. I need to flush that one out a little bit more, I think. Okay. So we'll, we'll just say that he he did find something a little bit based off what we talked about earlier, but I need to have a better idea of what I exactly what it I, is. I, I, Fifth would want to figure out whether or not he could truck Goshawk or if Goshawk is in on it, based on the amount of time that Goshawk has been around and how, the amount of time that the like, discrepancies have been around, based on gotcha. what he noticed last time. Um. So with that, like knowing that he's been around for... As long as he has, it's very likely that he would have known about it because he's a trusted advisor. And so he would be able to potentially, well, well he, w- he would know that there was something there, whether or not he knew exactly what it was for is to be determined, but he would know that there is something, something would be up. And Fifth would also be using this opportunity to kind of <laughs> test. Elaba a bit too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so as as that gets revealed and she would she looks and yeah, she explains that yeah, he's been in the family for years and that um Yeah, I do remember that Daddy said something he said has said something about I don't know, about paying something to somebody or I don't know exactly what it was, but he never actually let me see the books very well. I've, this is the first time I've ever been able to, ever been able to see anything. Indeed, well. <laughs> well, we'll come back to this. It seems they, they need me a tunnel. <laughs> okay, well, should we, go, should we go to the kitchen first? Uh... uh are are you hungry? Well, well, no, but I mean, Howard said something oh, about right. the, the, the animals, cooks having a yes, problem. Uh, sorry, I was distracted. Yes, to the kitchens then to <laughs> see what's uh, well to see the animals resurrecting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second. What do you think? Is it? Do you think this has anything to do with the cow? And this is the second time this, we've seen this today. It seems likely. <laughs> All right, very well. Well, let's go. And then she leads you off into the kitchens. <clears throat> and when you when you arrived there to the kitchens, you see there are several servants that are kind of standing around, and then one woman is holding a chicken. I see you say it's not dying. It's not dying. Watch. And she walks up and grabs another chicken and she wrings its neck 
and it falls down to the ground. And then a few seconds later, it starts to stand back up again. The only way that it dies is if you chop off his head, watch! And then she gets a cleaver and she chops off that's head. And now it finally says dead. I don't know what's going on. This is the fourth chicken this has happened to. And then at that point, she sees you walk in fifth. Oh, my lord, do you know what's going on here? Oh, uh, perhaps you could explain to me what it is you're seeing. <laughs> I see these chickens. Normally, I no now now my lord. I know I know chickens. I've been around chickens all my life. I knew chickens. My mama knew chickens. My grandmother knew chickens. Her mother knew chickens, and her mother knew chickens, and her mother knew chickens. We know chickens, my lord. You don't. You can count. You can take that to the bank if you if you want. I all the sorts of the chickens, the brown chickens, the white chickens. The orange chicken, it's in all of them. When you try, and normally when you grab them and you wring their scrawny little necks, they die. And then we eat them, and I prepare them for the for the for the master house for for you and the missus. But today, every time that I wring their necks, they die for a second, and then I come back. The only way to ki to kill them is to chop off their head. Well, and you being experienced in the world and all, maybe you, you might have any inkling as to what might be going on, whether these are unholy chickens or, or some other, some, some evil will be afoot, or I don't know. They were working, they were all dying just fine yesterday, a couple of days ago. I, I do have one or two guesses, but uh, I, I will say I think they are fine, fit fit for consumption. Um, so long as you make sure they are good and dead, uh, perhaps you should be chopping off their heads. And uh, I will go and uh, I, I will need to go and ascertain um, the nature of the the un the, the their undying nature. Oh, the nature of this nature. Very well, my lord. I I always found they tasted better when you chopped off their heads. Yes. So yeah, we'll do that. Do continue to uh, make sure they are good and dead, and uh, before cooking them. Well, of course, my lord. You don't want to eat a chicken that's halfway alive. That's fair. I could tell you stories about that, my lord. Yes. Uh, I don't have the time at this moment, but perhaps another time. Thank you very much. Uh, please uh, just make sure you're chopping off their heads and uh, before you're cooking them. Thank you. Yes, sir. And she does like a little curtsy. It's a pleasure to be to see you and the missus. Yes. Uh... And then she goes back to what she was doing. Ah, <laughs> uh, we should just go to town hall then. Uh, just, just, just we've confirmed that they are undead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, all right, so you'll head off to, uh, Town Hall. So kind of, we'll transition over to, um, Sparta and Shay now. So you both left the, the Monastery of the Players, or the, the former Energizer, and are able to walk back through the town and you're able to make it back to the um, refugee camp where you saw all of the other um, well, where you saw the other refugees and where you know where um, Carl is staying with his wife or where his wife is staying. Carl hasn't seen him, seen her yet. Okay. <clears throat> Um, do you make it, I'm assuming you go right back to her. Do I know right where she is? I think so, didn't you guys? If I remember right, you saw her first, right? Oh yeah, I think we did, didn't we? I think you, I think you said, you did meet her, so she, you know where she lives. And. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, yeah. then yeah, we would just, I would just take him straight back. Okay. Um, so you're able to make it back without any problems. The guards don't harass you this time as you're 
staying, as she's, I'm assuming, staying fairly close to you. Um, yep. Okay, perfect. So you guys make it back to the house. Um, you walk up, and as you walk up to the door, or walk up to the house, then the door opens, and Janet walks out, and just, after seeing Carl, she just bursts into tears, and she runs up to him, and you should see a heartfelt reunion as they both cling to each other, not having seen each other for quite some time. And they kind of compose themselves a little bit, and they look up. Thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. I, I don't know how I could ever repay you for what you've done. You're welcome. You've brought no. our family together. No thanks are necessary. Just doing, doing what's right, ma'am. I, I, I'm afraid I still don't know exactly what you are, but you, I'll spread the word around that you're good people. You're good folk. You're good folk. I appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> and then she goes and she turns to um to Carl. So, so what happened? What, wh where have you been? How? We'll take our leave at this point. You, you guys have some catching up to do. I. Very well, good, thank you. Have a good day. Shay, should we uh, go meet up with the others? Yeah. Where right. Where do we do that at? I don't know. I think I'm going to go. I think Ezra said to meet up in, at the tavern. Okay. How about you lead the way there then? Sounds good. All right. So as you start to walk away from the um, from their house, you hear down the road. You, you hear a boy that start that's running up and just screaming his 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 head off. Help! Somebody help! Can somebody I, please help us? I immediately run over and get down on one knee so I'm at his eye level. What seems to be the what seems to be the matter? He looks you at you and. In terror, but also like not sure who else to turn because nobody else is coming. There's there's something there's something horrible that's happening at the house. I don't know who you are, what you are, but please come quick. Lead the way. And he goes and he turns and he he sprints off to the he sprints off to another house that's about just at the end of the road that he that you guys are walking in, walking in or walking down. <laughs> um, as you follow him, you walk up to to this house and you see there's a crowd that's gathered outside of the outside of the building and you see there's a loud commotion inside of the actual house and he turns to you and says there's there's something there's something wrong with with that man in there he i i don't know what's happening they i, I don't know and then uh an adult walks up and kind of pushes the boy away what what are you doing here do, do, do you know? How, do, are you able to make sense of the situation? Are you asking me? Yes. Oh. Uh, considering the boy can't tell me what's going on, and no one else has, no. <clears throat> well, let me let me catch you up to speed. I don't know. I mean, you might. Be, you seem like one of those magic folks. Maybe maybe you'll you'll be able to know what's going on here. All right. There's a man inside. Who's been sick for for days, and then he died. A very tragic, tragic death. Unfortunately, then all of a sudden, he came back alive, and he's not himself. He's not acting himself, but we're not sure exactly what to do. That he was supposed to be dead, and now he's alive again. Now, now half of the people in there say that it's it's a blessing from Darak L, while the other half. Say that the body just needs to be destroyed, and and we don't know what's going on. All right, well, let me through, and we'll take a look. Shay, you, you're with me, right? Yeah. All right, let's go take a look at this. All right. So you're walking. You're able to kind of shove your way through, and you're able to oh, see no, the no, body. No. If they're not oh. parting for me automatically, I'm just gonna. Everybody right. move! <laughs> And they all kind of look at you, and they all silence up, and they... It's just like... Yeah, just a bunch of ants that just kind of 
part away because they're all kind of nervous of you. They don't know what you are. And they, they clear a path for you. They instantly kind of quiet down as you walk in. All right. So I go on in. All right. So you walk on in. Um, it's just a it's just a small little house with a living room. You see a bed that's on the end of the at the end of the room with a man that's tied tied down to the bed, and you see this. Um, you see a guy that's looking there, and he's kind of unsure of you for a second, and then. He kind of gathers his wits about him and says, Well, oh, thank you. Thank you for, for coming them down. Who are you? The name's Sparta. Oh, what seems to be the situation here? <clears throat> well. And why is this old man tied down? Well. Well, you see, he's... Why, why it's, it's been very unusual. He... He was very sick, and he died. And... Dead people are supposed to stay dead, you see. But then, yes. after a while, he came back alive. It was no... There was no... I, we can't tell it, any sort of necrotic energy. or there, there was, There's nobody here that knows anything about it. But somehow, the, the body just came back alive. He's not able to speak, and he, he doesn't really seem like he's his own self, but the body's been reanimated. But it seems to me there's some sort of disconnect with... With the spirit and the body, I, I'm unsure. Is he My name is Sandaru, by the way. Who are you? Hi, Sandaru? So, was that right? My name is Sandaru. Sandaru Sasaru. Apologize. All right, Sandaru. Um. Yeah. So, is he violent? Is that why he's being held? Against his will. Well, we have will? I mean, not really. Half of us want. Half of the people here want us to to set him on fire and kill him because the dead the dead should remain dead. But the other half of us believe it might be some sort of blessing from All Hail Durakel, who of whom I am a priest of. All right, Mister Priest of Durakel. D- do you know a crumb? Oh yes, crumb was my ment was my mentee. Mentee. He came to I. What's I taught mentee? him. Ah, uh, okay. So I, you're I am his, his mentor. You're his mentor. Got it. Correct. Is he always that dumb? Has he always <laughs> been that dumb? I could have told I... you that. <laughs> yes, see, it was a very sad story. He. He came to us after fighting in the wars, and nobody knows who his true parentage is or where, where he truly came from, other than he came on from something about the, the Dew Mountains. Mountains of Dew. But yes, he has always been that stupid. It has been rather frustrating to teach him, if you, I'm sure you can understand. Yes, I've had, I've had the pleasure of traveling with him, I do understand indeed. Anyways, sorry to get off topic here. So is this guy violent? I do not believe so. He's not trying to attack anybody. So let's get their strengths off him, then. Uh, he kind of looks around. It's okay, everyone. He's okay. I This big man can, can shut him down and, and take care of him should there be a problem. Because the crowd starts to kind of get a little uneasy. Yes, yes. Which camp are you on? Are you in? Do you believe this is a blessing from Durakel? Well, I... He, he kind of gets a little bit nervous at that, and he's... I, I, I'm, I'm really... I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I, I need to... I, I, I wanted to step out. I was about to step out before you walked in to consult the gods. To All consult right, well, Durakel. You, you go ask Durakel. And, uh... We'll, we'll watch over... Who is this? Um, what is this guy's name? And then a voice from the a voice from the crowd says, "Hey, name it Reggie." Yeah, Reggie. 
Alright, so we'll watch over Reggie here while you go and consult with Durak Hell. Um, alright, very well. Um, I, I guess I will do that. And he kind of walks shakily past you. And I want both of you to roll an inside check. That's a nat 20 for a total of 20. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, 27. All right. So both of you can tell that he... There is not something right about the situation with how he's handling it. He doesn't seem... He seems like he... For someone that's a priest, he should be able to be handling the situation better than he is. And you can tell there's something off as he as he's walking really shakily to, to walk out to walk outside. Is he dressed like a priest? Yeah. Um I don't remember if you were there to see him or not. I think you were. I think you would have seen him. Because he was part of, yeah, you would have seen him. Because he was part of, like, the kind of the original quests line. He's the one who told us to go fix the statue. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does it look like him? Yeah, it's, it's, looks like it's the, the same person that you, that you made. He doesn't recognize you, Shay, but. Well, because. I mean, he is wearing his robes yeah, yeah. and. And he. From what you remember of him, then he looks to be the same person, just the cleric that's dressed up in, in his robes. Okay. Like, do we can tell that he's hasn't been religious in this? Or is he... He seems shaken... And not handling the situation properly. Meaning? Meaning something's wrong. With him, or? Yes, there's something wrong with him and how he's... For somebody that's a priest that should be able to handle this kind of uh, event. Oh, okay, I see what it is. Okay. Yeah. They're doubting their faith type thing. Okay. Either that or he can't connect to his god. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he walks out. Um. And as soon as he walks it, out, yeah. I'm untying him, and I'm gonna, assuming he's not violent, I'm gonna start dragging him off to the, to the sanctuary of the players. <laughs> Where are you going? Well, that guy didn't seem to know what he was doing. I'm going to take him over to the players. Why not just take him to Crumb? Yeah, I don't really think <laughs> Crumb's capable of handling a situation like this. Okay, what about Ezra? I don't know anything about Ezra. Ezra is a wizard. Okay. I mean, if they think this is some deity thing, then maybe the the guys over at the that sanctuary that healed the other guy, maybe they'll be able to do something. I I don't think so. I mean, they fix the other guy's mental problems. Maybe they'll break bring this guy's mental stuff back. No, this this is necromancy. I mean, if you say so. If the cow came back to life, then it's but they, necromancy. But they tried to detect magic and they didn't sense any necromancy on the cow. And the priest guy said that there was no necromantic energy on this guy either. Well, something's happened. Didn't yep. you say there was something wrong during one of the nights that fell off? Yeah, felt like extra darkness or something going on. Like kind of an oppressive energy seeping over the world. Maybe it's that. 
Oh, maybe. I'm fine with either. We can either go and take him over to this Ezra guy, see if it's something magical, or we can take him over to the uh, priests over at the sanctuary for the players and see if there's a religious aspect to this. I don't think it's religious. Hmm? I think it's something to what you guys did with the leprechaun. Hmm? Could be, I suppose. Anything's possible. Nobody seems to know what's going on, and quite frankly, I haven't been alive long enough to have any any idea one way or the other. So, I think we need to go I'll to follow Ezra. your lead on this one. All right, let's, let's take him to Ezra. Take it to Ezra. Ezra's figuring out this whole entire thing with this freaking Abner person. All right, sounds good. So I just toss him over my shoulder like I was carrying Crazy Carl and Fifth, and head off, head on out. I guess we're heading to Ezra. All right. Um, the crowd, they kind of look at you, and they're not really sure what to do, but they figure, well, wait, what What? What are you going to do to him? You're, you're going to you're, you're gonna hurt him, or, or, or what, what's your plans? Are you going to bring him back? No, we'll probably bring we him back. No idea. However, it is no longer any of your concern, and I'm going to get like right in this guy's face and try and intimidate him like I did the guard. Okay, roll, uh, roll intimidation check. Okay, uh, 21. Yeah, everyone, let's just let's just let the big guy take take old Reggie. Uh, he seems like he knows what he's doing. And he kind of yeah. backs away and I, he'll, he he seems like a stand up fella. I bet he'll be he'll be right back with with Reggie one way or the other. If he's dead, great. If not, well, he owed me money, so you know, whatever. That is unfortunate. Hopefully you'll get your money back. Shay, you were starting to say something there. You need to be nice. I thought I was being... You weren't. Oh. I look at the guy, still uncomfortably close to him. Uh, I I apologize. We'll bring him back if things... Get better. All right. Uh, all right. So um, that way you guys can do a proper burial if all right. we get him dead. I appreciate yeah, that, that, ma'am. That yeah, we'll do, we'll, we'll do that. Very well. Bye, Reggie. All right. Now, <laughs> should I lead on? Because I still have no idea where this other guy is. Okay. Let's go. All right. and, and as we walk away, I take Reggie's hand and I wave by with it. Not the guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you leave the group. You walk outside and you see, <laughs> uh, pushed up against the building, sitting down, breathing into a bag hysterically. You see Sandaru is just like freaking out as he's like, <laughs> "You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this." I shrug my. Sh- I'm just going to shrug my shoulders keep going if Shay continues onward. Well, she stopped and watch. Okay. Take deep breaths. You're okay. going to be fine. Okay. <gasps> nothing. <gasps> what? Nothing about your religion is going to fix this. Oh. Okay. You're, yeah. It's something well, happened you- a couple days ago. Can, can I tell you a secret? Sure. Yes. A secret. Uh, I'm a fraud. I am a fraud. I, there was this traveling tinker. His name was Harold Hill. And he sold me this religion. And and I started this whole religion. I don't even believe in it. I don't, I don't understand how Crum has these powers. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a complete mystery to us. He, he shouldn't... Uh, I didn't think he was real, and now, all of a sudden, Crumb somehow has powers. He's a paladin of a god that I didn't think was real. So what you're telling me is that you lied to everybody? Well, I mean... To, to control a man, them? A, a, man's got to make, a man's got to make a living, you understand. 
Yes, but there are more honest ways to do that. Very well. Yeah, you have convinced me. I, I will, I will move away, and I will find a new, a, pr- a new profession. How about a, a you come back to... and talk to Crumbs first? Uh, I don't think. Uh, have you noticed how big he is? I, I don't know if that's I a good idea. I am. <laughs> he thinks about it for a second. Uh, oh, maybe you're right. Um, come on. Uh, Let's go talk to Crumbs. If you're going to leave, he's going to want to say goodbye to you. You're like, based on what you told me earlier, he's kind, you're kind of like a father figure to him. Oh, wait to rub it in the, rub the salt in the wound. Very well. I mean, you've I already lied to him this much. You can come up with some lie to, about why you're leaving well, town anyways. That's true. We don't have to tell him anything. He, very good idea. I'll, I'll lie to him about everything. Say I have to go on a long trip for Drakel, and then it'll be all. It'll be every, everything will be okay. Exactly. I'm sure it'll. I'm know. sure it'll play out just like that. <laughs> all right. And so he he gets up and kind of like shamefully walks along with you guys to get back to the inn. <clears throat> um. So this point, I would say that Crum and. Crumb and Aver and Sparta and Shay have all convened at the inn around the same time as Hey Crumbs Hith goes to the town hall. So we'll do the Yeah. So we'll do the right. stuff right. at the inn and then we'll go to go over to Fifth. Hey Crumbs, say Navar. Hey, what's up? I found your dad. My dad? Yeah, see? And I pointed uh Sundari or whatever. <laughs> That's not my dad. That's that was my teacher. Oh, sorry. I'm still I'm still learning the proper proper words. That's okay. Hey, Anyways. Sundari. Hello. Hello, Kram. How are you? Are we inside the inn, GM? Yeah. Yeah. You would have come inside of the inn. Okay, I'm gonna Sitting position the- myself between Sundario and the door. Hey, uh, Crumbs. Yeah. He made up Durakel and has lied to you about everything else. <laughs> now he's going to lie to you some more about why he's leaving town. <laughs> he's so funny. Your yeah, friend is. is so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, well, he's, he's, he's new in this world. I mean, he's still trying to figure out how to tell jokes and be funny. He doesn't quite have the humor figured out yet. Not like oh, my crumb. humor, which is masterful. Crumbs. Of course, yeah. Crumbs. That wasn't a joke. <laughs> yeah, it's not how you tell jokes there, <laughs> Sparta. Crumbs. Yeah. Crumbs. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not joking. We, we found this guy. Your humor. See, look. All right, here. Hey, Mr. Priest guy, fix this dude. Bring the zombie guy out front. <laughs> oh! What's wrong? What? What is wrong oh. with him? Oh, you know very well. We found you at the scene. Oh, of course. Here, one second. And he, he he looks around, and then he kind of like looks into his pockets, and then he pulls out a potion. No. And then he opens it. See, we'll see this potion. It will do the it will do the trick. Watch. Crumbs. And he gets it. Yeah. Does Durakel usually work through potions? No. No, he doesn't. What? Oh, you're, Sonaro, you're, right. you're being course, funny. Um, I know. I we are. We have. Remember the time, Mister. Remember the time, Crumb, when you were, when you were just just new to us, and you thought that the you thought that the bunny rabbits was was something about. Uh, <laughs> and he kind of just trails off, not not knowing where to go with that story. You're you're right. I've, we are very funny. We have got some good times, Crumb. You've yeah, done a very do. good job with your, with your, with your studies. I'm so impressed with how far you've come with the Raquel. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm excited to get you know to uh, increase my knowledge even more. I mean, I know I've been away a while, but uh, maybe you can, you know, teach me what the next lessons are. Oh, I, you know, you know, Crumb. I think it is time 
that you that you venture off on your own. You, I've been able to teach you all that I know of the Rock Hill, and he's te- and he's followings. You're you won't, you know more than I do at this point. I do. Oh, oh yes. That's what well, I mean. I guess uh, I have seen many of the the miracles of Durakel, and I'm oh, sure yes. not as many as the miracles of you've seen in your life. But I mean, oh, like the miracle well, of you actually getting powers. Well, right. I mean, the miracles of the powers, and then I mean, let's not forget teacup. That was probably the most amazing experience, you know. Oh, Sandaro, I never told you about Teacup. <gasps> so, I had this snail. He was my pet. He was my friend. He liked to eat squash. And through some unfortunate events, he... As his wolf died. heads start to roar, I pull out my spear and throw it at the roaring head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he says squash. Uh, yeah, roll an attack roll. <laughs> Can I roll like a? Uh, um, that is a athletics uh, to like grab it or yeah. like grab the that spear. That is a twenty-four to hit. Um, I try to like cat- catch the spear in the air. I mean, I, I'll give you an athletics check to to roll to see what your reaction time would be because you'd be completely caught off guard in the story, but. If you can, if you can roll high enough athletics, then we'll see if your reactions can be bit good enough to to stop it. I have to beat his. Uh, yeah, you have to beat his twenty-one or twenty four. whatever he rolled twenty-four. He's sixteen plus eight. I can math right. Yeah, twenty-four. Wait, you got sixteen plus eight? Yep. The fighter. <laughs> yep. No, I know. I just rolled a seventeen, and I have a plus seven. <laughs> I think it's tied. Yep. Normally, that would go. That would be a hit. Yeah, I. I would say you have to. You have to beat it. Is what originally said. Oh, so okay. he. So, the louder of the two would have been, the um. The large wolf head, the larger the one, di- the dire, dire wolf. wolf. Yeah. So it hits. Uh, roll for damage. Twelve. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, you pretty much ripped the entire head off. <laughs> this is so sad. I- I rolled a natural one for see you know, what happened. So <laughs> he ripped the die. He ripped the direwolf head off as um you hear it roar. I stop mid story. I'm like, uh, hey, what'd you do that what? for? I just saved what have your you life. What have you done? This our- was coming back to life, like all the animals. No, like the cow and like this guy. It was roaring no. at you. It was going to eat you. I saved your it life. It wasn't roaring. It roars because I enchanted it. It's my new coat. My cloak. Oh. When I say a special word like squash, and then what happens? <laughs> does, does the, <laughs> the other head still roar? <laughs> no, but the other... <laughs> the smaller the other head. head that's on there makes this really obnoxious whitey bark. It's... <laughs> <laughs> you weren't able to hear it before because the other one was so loud inside and you're inside. You haven't been able to hear it. That's not what wolves say. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> so when I say that word, then they howl. It's totally normal. I don't have to uh, get, get it reattached. And I pick up the head and I put it in my magic bag of holding and I look back at Sindaro. So I just the snail and threw an an accidental certain situation he he died and i was so distraught cuz i had also lost my best friend at the same time bait he he went away somewhere and but anyway and i prayed to durakel and 
and then I pull out like it was been hiding kind of under my clothing gear stuff. I pull out the uh, Durakel holy symbol that's that snail design thing. And I'm like, in Durakel, he took the body of the snail and, and changed his form to the silver necklace that gives me the powers. And uh, he really is a real god. He looks at you completely flabbergasted with his, mu- his jaws completely hung open wide. And then he kind of composed himself. Oh, congratulations, Crumb. Why well, you have... You have finally succeeded in achieving mastery of, of Durakel. You have exceeded far beyond anybody that I've ever known. And it has come to, to Durakel. You are now... I believe you are now... Oh, well, I must call you our leader when it comes to Durakel. Well, it all I'm matters leader. regarding no. such. No. Sparta face palms. <laughs> but surely oh, yes. you've had your own miracles like this before, right? Oh, of of course I have. I have I've had many of many of these these miracles. Exactly. Um, so this whole speak of you saying you made it up is <laughs> so obviously you're joking because. <sighs> All right, Grum, look, can I hold up the All right, Grums, you're right. I'm joking. However, <laughs> however, I believe Sundaru said that there was prophecy about the leader of the church would be determined by he who wears the snail or something like that. And so obviously that prophecy is talking about you and you're I've now never a heard of that prophecy. That's because it was only kept amongst the upper upper echelon, upper ranks. I look at Sindario. Did you tell him about this prophecy? He kind of he looks up and then he kind of glances over at you, Sparta. I'm as sure. He does, as he does, one of my one of the firelights <laughs> of my eyes go out <laughs> as a wink. <laughs> my attempt at winking. Wait, which eye? <laughs> the. The dishonest one <laughs> goes out. <laughs> I I see Sondaru looking over, and I look over just to catch the the eye come back to light. Uh, Sondaru, you can't trust his left eye. It's the untrustworthy eye. Right. That's oh, why. Just... That's why that was the one that went out. Because I'm telling oh. the truth. <laughs> Sondaru. Oh yes. You're like. It- I feel like you might... Are you having a crisis of faith? <laughs> he looks it's around. okay. It happens to everybody. It is true. From time to time. It is true, Come, I am having a bit of a crisis of the faith. I, I, I feel like I must take a sabbatical and go leave this place and and go find my inner Turakel. Maybe fi- become one with the snails as you have done. Yes, go find your own teacup. And make sure you take care of it. And teacups, they like all sorts of vegetation, like pumpkins. And I and reach up and I grab the mouth of the wolf, <laughs> the small wolf head, to keep it closed, and say, "And squash." You're just going. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Very well. You, I believe you are right, Crumb. Um, there is. I, it, it appears that today the student has become the master, and yes, I must. The teachers become the teacher. Wait. Oh yes, that is very true. I will go. I will go now. If you don't mind, I. We shall meet again, Crumb, as I find my inner Durakel. I it know was very you good can. To, it was very good to see you, Crumb. It, it's okay. I'm so if proud you, of you. I'm I'm proud of you too. Or I'm proud of me. I'm proud of you for being proud of me. Wait. But Durakel, he sees everything. Remember everything you taught me. And uh and if you ever need to talk to anybody about it, I'm always here for you. Oh, oh thank you, Crumb. I I have everything I taught you in this little book that we made. I mean that we have. I will, I will hold on to it dearly, and I of will find, next time we it. speak, 
we will speak about the Rock Hill, and maybe I will have the experience that you did. Well, Sundaru, are you leaving immediately? I, 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 I believe Probably it's for the be best. Probably be around for another day or two, was in case Crumbs has any questions on how to run the church. Oh, he, he, he always he knows how to get a hold of me. It would it would be okay. I as as Crumb said, I must I must find the inner self, the inner the inner soul of my of my being to reconnect with the Raquel. Sandaro. Yes, Crumb. I wish you best in your journeys, and I know. I know you made it all up to help me out when I was younger. You obviously made these booklets because there weren't any booklets of Durakel yet. And you wrote down the writings. And so when you say you made it up, of course you did, because you didn't have the writings before, but you already knew about Durakel. So somebody had to write it down and be the first person to write it. So I know you made it up. And that's okay. Oh, you, are, you are a very smart cum. I, but don't forget that Durakel, he's real. He loves all of us. He's the source of all the energies. And he loves snails. He walks up to you and kind of pats you on the shoulder and then kind of whispers to you, You know, Crumb, people might think and say that you're stupid, but you're not that stupid after all. You're very, very smart. And I let other people you. know that. You, you're the smartest of all. Hey, Crumbs. Of everybody. Yeah. Did you just say Duraka loves everyone? Uh, I think so, yeah. Are you sure about I that? I think that's what I said. I, said, I think that's what I said. Andaru, does that sound right? Does that match his teachings? Um, what you taught him? I mean, in general, yes. He, the Rock Hilt does strive to love everyone, but you know when there are when there are plenty of murderers and and, and horrible people out there, it's he. No, he no, gets to a no. place. It's either what he said was right or it's wrong. Does he love everyone? Well, he tolerates fishermen, but <laughs> he loves everyone. <laughs> or at least I tolerate fishermen. I'm working on it. Exactly. All right. I was, I was worried about that. So do you think if Durakale's telling you you should love everyone and you hate fishermen, are you sure you're ready I'd to run tolerate. the church? I'm trying to love them. But All nobody's right. perfect. If I were, then I would have joined up with Durakel already. I see. Not sure what that means, but I'll... I'll when, save that for another when day. When we're all perfect and dead, then our essence and spirit joins up with Durakel and we contribute to the overall energy of all things. So, so if you were perfect, you'd be dead. Yep. Interesting. So, <laughs> dead things are perfect. Usually. I see. So is Durakel actually like a god of death? Nope. He's the god of energy and light. Not why, apparently. All right. Anyways, I step aside. Let me hear what's going on. Go ahead, Sundaru. Oh, no. Off oh, you go. Very well. Very well. It was good to meet all of you. And Crumb, good luck. We shall meet again. I, I, I know it will happen. And next time we speak, I will be one with the Raquel in the energy and the light. I know you will. I know you can do it. You'll survive this crisis of faith. Don't worry. And then he 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 gives a bow to you, Crumb, and then kind of skitters past around Sparta as best he can to make a beeline for the door to get out. I just give him a shooing motion as he goes by. He runs off and then runs out and then leaves. <clears throat> And then I go retrieve my spear. Okay. 
Do I see Ezra at the tavern? <clears throat> um, I don't remember. Did we? We brought him to you... the camp, he, and then he told us to go to the the chapel. Yeah. Did he say and... he was going to meet you at the tavern? Did yeah. we say that? Before? I think so. Okay, then. Then yeah, he'd be in the corner, just kind of watching this whole thing and, and watching the whole thing go go. Go on, yeah. Okay. And then after Sandaru leaves, and then he'd go up and kind of shuffle over. <clears throat> uh, we are, I, they're all here. I, I, I see. Who are you? Uh, this is Ezra. Am, you, you met him I'm at Ezra the Hotman. camp, remember? We talked to him over the things because he was going to, and he was going to do experiments on me when he showed up. When I showed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, my name is Ezra Harden. I was the, Hello, the wizard of of Tareem before, before when whatever happened. I don't uh, know. Exactly. Where, where crazy, is Crazy Carl? Couldn't couldn't uh, really tell us much. I've got another guy for you here, though. I mean, I mean, did you did you ask Carl after you? After you revived him? Well, no, no, I just took him back to his wife. Oh, well, that, that, that might have been smart to, to ask you what happened after he had his memory, but, but that's okay. We, Is there a reason we'll, we'll figure that out later. Is there a reason we he need that? He might not have had his memories either. Oh, that is very true. Good point. Anyways, here's this guy. I hand him over. <clears throat> it's down. But, and, and, uh, uh Yes, I, I I see him. What 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 do you want me to do with with him? Where, where did you where did you get him? <laughs> uh, back in the uh, camp yeah. area where we dropped off Crazy Carl. Um, there was a big commotion. There's, apparently, this guy died, but's now not dead. And there was no necromancy magic detected by the guy who just left. I see. That is very disturbing. Well, here's the thing. Before we came into the uh, town, there was a cow that died, but then been revived. That farmer Hecuba, I think. Yes, was, it was. He was trying to kill the cow for dinner. Mm. I, 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 I believe I've I've heard of other reports around the the town of of things and people. Dying and not staying dead as, as is proper. Let me, let me investigate. Give, stand back a moment. Let me, let me see what I can find out. And then he, he kind of goes into a fugue state as he starts to mumble, and his eyes kind of glow this, this blue white that you've seen before. As he starts to cast these spells, and he, he pulls out a um. A bottle, like a small little potion. Well, it's like a little vial, and he opens it up, and a bunch of smoke starts to billow out of the vial as he he looks around and he is muttering all sorts of spells and other things under his breath, trying to do some investigation to see what is possibly going on. And after does, about does, ten minutes or so, of this. I'll go ahead. Does any does it look like anything's actually happening? No. Okay, so other about... than the, the smoke. At about the nine and a half minute mark, since you said it was going to take him ten minutes. I'll even make yep. it like nine minutes and 45 seconds. So right before he's done. Are you another crackpot like the last guy? <laughs> he looks up and just Let kind of Let the man work! <laughs> but no. But nothing's happening. I'm not. Just... <sighs> Do you, you need proof of my powers? No. I no. promise you. All right. I he am not like patient. that person that you just asked experienced before. Right. Please give me a, a couple more minutes. I was almost done and you, oh. you, you interrupted me. I apologize. He takes another like, he takes another five minutes to go through and repeats kind of the same gestures that he was doing. After three, I start tapping my foot. 
<laughs> and he kind of like subtly like eyes you, but still is is working through. And after he completes it, he looks up. Very, very, very odd. I, I cannot detect anything happening from a magical standpoint. I, I do not detect any, any undead, any necrotic energy or, or anything. It, it is very, very odd. I, I have seen the, the effects of Abner and the, the things he has done with his cretins. I've seen many of the, many of the things that he has done with the ta- with the leftovers of Tareem and even of the keep that he, that he commandeered. And there's, this is nothing like anything I've ever seen. It, I, 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 I'm unfortunately cannot say exactly what it is. It, it feels like there's something to do with the spiritual realm, but I, I, I'm unfortunately not as learned in that as I, as I would like to be. My stories have taken me elsewhere, and I do not have as good of a connection with the spiritual realm as I would like. So, but, what do you recommend? At this point, we need to speak with someone that is in tune with the spiritual realm. Perhaps, perhaps that that monastery that healed your Carl friend. I might can be do able it. To say something. Uh, I'm in touch with the spiritual realm. I, I, if you want to try, uh, from, um, I guess you can try now that you're the head of your religion, I guess. Uh, I'm not the head. I can be the, uh, chief master paladin, I guess. Uh, no, very wait, well, well, he's littered. Never mind. I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go ahead and try, Crum, and if not, then we may need to to communicate with someone else that is a little bit more knowledgeable. Maybe we shouldn't have left that that your cleric friend leave. Well, well yeah, actually, he wanted to go, but he was having a crisis. Probably crisis. not him on second thought. So go ahead, yeah, Crum. So, uh, do you see what you can find out? You want me to find out what's going on? If you if you can, you can certainly try. Okay, I will do it. When do you want me to do it? <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, Spark oh, right now again with a big old sigh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let me, uh, I like put my fingers together, lace them together and, you know, crack my knuckles and just kind of shake my shoulders and loosen my arms a little bit. Just kind of, all right, here we go. And I grab my Durakel necklace and I begin this incantation prayer mentioning Durakel and the light and the power and source of energy and something about teacup and snails. Um, very passionate, very in-depth praying to find out what is going on so that okay. the wizard and everyone can have the answer they're looking for. And Durakel, I know you're there because you've helped me before and my, my teacup necklace is here because of you and Sundaru is losing faith, but I know you're there and you can help us out. And and I go on for like two or three minutes kind of recapping where we've been. <laughs> <laughs> and then I end the prayer. All right. Um, so you sit there and you, you focus intensely on your amulet and you gather all of your spiritual being, all the essence that you've accumulated that you can possibly hold on to, and you're able to push through the cloud of idiocy that normally fogs your brain and you have a a clear a moment of clarity as you start to kind of become in depth and you you're able to somehow breach through the the clouds of your of your mind and all of a sudden everything goes dark for a second and then you have a vision and you're standing as in a completely white space 
And you just hear a voice. This crumb, my son. What can I do for you? Oh, great, Durakel. There's some strange happenings in the land around us. Creatures are not dying. Animals are not dying. And well, what's going on? What's up with that? Yes. Well, as you may remember, you you had some contact with a leprechaun shortly. Yeah, you didn't go a while ago. Old. Yes. Well, it seems as as if the wish that you made to strip the being Abner of his be- of his powers. It was successful in that his powers have been stripped, but it looks like because he was one of the mighty Titanborns of the of this plane of existence, the powers of death were bound to his soul, and now that he has been now that they have been stripped away from his soul and from his being, they have no vessel, and they've been released. Out into the world. And so there is no... The, the spirits of all of the beings that die have no path, have no, have no way to go. They are stuck here in this realm. And so it appears as if as they die the first time, the spirits try to latch on to the body as that is what they are familiar with. And once the body, once the vessel is no longer inhabitable, they have decided to live here in the mortal plane as they are unable to make it back to the realm of the dead where they belong. So you're saying when they die, their spirit doesn't have anywhere to go because they can't get to fulfill their death. So they... Correct. Their body they cannot go back. back. So how does their body, like, heal itself? The, the body does not heal itself. It is if once the spirit re-inhabits the, bo- the vessel it moves as best as it can but the body is not alive. It is an undead without the undead. The spirit is just inhabiting the body trying to force a bond that has been severed. This is why your friend here is not conscious. He is not the person that he was and he is unable to perform the way he did in life, as his, his spirit is clinging to a body that is rejecting that connection. Hey, GM, sorry. I must have missed it. So when, like, the lady killed the chicken, the chicken came back to life, but its head was, its neck was still broken? Yeah, the neck was broken, so it was, like, lim- oh, it was gotcha. limping. I, I but it that. never, yeah. Like, it wasn't, it's, like, the body was still, like, damaged, but it still was able to kind of move around. Gotcha. Okay. Same thing with the rat when it was pounded and, de- and pulverized until it was actually, like, violently eviscerated. It was still moving around. Alright. Uh, so if the body can't take the spirit back, what happens to the spirit at that point? The spirit the just body. the spirit is trapped here until we can, until the bridge to the the after realm has has been restored. the The power of the death needs to have some sort of vessel that must be contained, so that the connection can be restored. As the cycle of life goes from the pre spiritual world to the mortal realm to the afterlife. I see. And, and must what must we do to path. restore that path? That what is something that you must find that? on your own, my son. There, I must. I can give you help along the way, but that is the, that answer is something you must work with your party to figure out how to restore balance. As you are responsible for disrupting the world, it is your responsibility to come up with a way to set it back right again. All right. And what should we do about Sendaru? He seems to have lost, lost his faith in his way. 
And he, you feel this great... Uh, you feel like this anger emanate from Durakil. That being of Sandarus Asaru was never one of mine. He is a phony, he is a fake, and he is a... S- <clears throat> so, uh, I, don't remember, I don't remember the word. He's a very bad person. He, he is not one that ever knew me. He is a fake and a phony and a liar. Oh. Well, maybe if you... Well, I guess I'll try to work with him on that. As with all... See him. As with all men, Crumb Tharn, should they reach out to me and have honest intent, I shall work with them. But he never attempted to have a connection with me, and so therefore, he is not of me. Gotcha. Okay. And with that... I will... uh, We will do what we can to restore that path. Do you have any other final... Advice or words for me on my journey. Just one. He starts to fade away. As he as he starts to fade away, he hears, "Fishermen are not as bad as you may think." What about any other any other (laughs) blessings for us? The connection severs. (laughs) While this is going on, um, what do I look like to the rest of the group? My eyes are glowing, right? Did my eyes are glowing? <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah, I'll I'll give you that. You're o- overwhelmed by the, yeah, with with contact with your deity. I'll, I'll give it to you that your eyes are glowing, as well as the the amulet that hold that you're holding to is obviously exceedingly bright as you're making this connection. All right, so. As I guess, as he cuts the connection, um, and I guess the amulet would stop glowing. Yeah, the amulet stops glowing, and you see Ezra Harden is absolutely slack jawed. And as no idea, well, as what you really see is Sparta right in front of you waving his hand. Yeah, but as my as my. As the whiteness fades away to reality, you see my eyes that are still glowing, but as they start to dim, I start speaking. The problem with the undead everything is that our wish to the leprechaun caused the bridge to death to be broken. It is up to us to restore that bridge because Abner no it's not Abner what was the guy's name Abner was the um, bad guy oh yeah yeah, okay I got it right yeah Abner Titanborn he was one of the so one of the Titanborn so Fifth and Elba are are headed to the town hall town hall right so they're not here (laughs) yeah yeah okay I mean, if you want, we can we can adjust that to nope, have him nope, call it nope, up there. Nope, nope, this is fine. I just <laughs> wanted to make sure that I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be there. That's, yep. Yeah. You were, went to the town hall, so that's where they're on their way to. Yep. So Abner Titanborn was one of the Titan... Is he one of the Titanborn? Is that what you said, Jared? Yes. Mm-hmm. One of the, Yeah, so I'm just basically repeating that to the group. Like, he's one of the Titanborn, and his, his powers... As our wish with the leprechaun succeeded and his powers were taken away, the bridge to death has been destroyed. It is up to us to restore the bridge of death. And as my eyes are fading back to normal, I'm still talking co- cohesively, coherently. It is up to us to restore that bridge. And and to do that, we... Well, I don't know what we have to do, but it's up to us to restore that bridge. And that is why the spirits, they can't... They're, the wandering and their bodies. When we kill things, their spirits they they don't know where to go, and the spirits take the bodies. 
but sometimes they can't because the bodies are destroyed. So when we kill things, we have to kill all the way. We have to like destroy the body, and and then and then the and the spirits. We have to fix it. Yep. Well, that doesn't sound good. On. So crap. <laughs> Not my responsibility. I was out of that. <laughs> Hey, uh, Ezra, you're, you, you know magical things. Uh, yes, I, 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 I do. I, I, I how, I how would, uh, how, how would one make a bridge to the other side, the spirit realm? He, he looks at you. I have no idea. I. To be honest, I didn't think that... I didn't even think that Crumb knew how to do anything. I didn't think he even had any power at all. I do. I have the best humor in the world. I'm the funniest person. Yeah, I'll you sure you are, that. Crumb. You are sure are. Oh, here we go again. Well, I mean, you did hear the story about the snail and the, the amulet thing, so... Do you, do you realize how many stories Crumb comes up with? Yes. I had to travel with him for a week. I'm fully aware. So can you honestly blame me? But I didn't quite think that story was real. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what have I ever oh. lied to you? I've always <sighs> told the truth. Indeed. Well. You lied to him when you were a sheep. What? Wait, Never no, mind. that's a sheep? different story. That's a different story. Okay, I want to hear this story later. <laughs> okay, maybe I did a little bit lie, but I, I'm better now and I don't lie anymore. <laughs> no, you you change your way once bait was gone. Yeah. You guys keep talking about this yeah. bait fellow. Doesn't sound like he was very good for your group. Bait was the turtle. Bait was the best Oh, turtle. the bad turtle. The bad the turtle. Yeah, the well, good turtle. At least he's got no powers now. So, uh, imagine That's the problem. Imagine Crumb's intelligence, and then take out about thirty, and you've got bait. Whatever, bait was smarter than me. <laughs> he Error. All the things. Error. <laughs> Cannot compute. <laughs> I you knew about, about the same, Ezra. Pizza. He knew how to cook food. A lot of food. There are so many new good foods that he introduced us to. Mm. Okay, so anyway, so... Oh, sorry about that. I'm back. Um, so we gotta figure out how to restore this bridge to the, to the spirit realm, huh? So yeah. it would seem. Ezra, do you know any good masons? Masons. What? Don't don't like we need to build a bridge? If it's guiding spirits, doesn't need to be a spirit mason. Oh, it's a good Is point. Anyone else looking at Sparta right now, you see the flames of his eyes get a little bigger with just like this exact, and you can tell without an insight check that it's a sign of exasperation on his <laughs> face, <laughs> having a just. Dealing with this. <laughs> well, Unless I mean, I. <laughs> so he kind of glances over and just. It's, it's, for Ezra, it doesn't it doesn't face him, but he does say, "Well, I I can't say as I know specifically a spiritual mason. I mean, that's not really something they cover in." At Wizard Street School on how to build a bridge to the to the undead to the dying world. So, I understand it's not your field of study. Who do we need to go find? I think the best, our best Durak, option is. To... Durak Gill said, "But that it was up Adler to us." Was to one of the out. Titanborn? Maybe there's others. Maybe do you know exactly. of others. You. I was about to suggest us that. 
There are three Titanborns. As I said, there's one that was over the living. There's one that's over the spiritual realm. And, and then the Titanborn just... that you're familiar with is over the death. The balance has been disrupted. You may need to speak with one of them to restore the balance once again. Are they or... good or bad? Well, I mean, death can be considered both good and bad. It's, it depends on... It all depends on your perspective. They, they see life as... as the only they, They're bad. focused... Yes. They, so they see they life like according to their, their essence. Some may consider them good, others may consider them bad. They do what is best to control the balance. I, in my studies, as we were looking through trying to find a cult or a following, I was able to find one of the, fo one of the followers of the, of the Titanborns in... Uh, hang on. Yeah, I remember the name. I was able to find a following of Shilrak, the titan born that focuses on the living, down in the south in the city of Elendel. You may be able to start there. What was right. the city's name? The city of Elendel. It is the, the home of the elves in this country. Oh, Howard. Bless you. speak to Howard. Oh, I, I do not know this Howard, but, but probably. Howard? Where's Fifth when we need him? I think he said he was going back to his house, right? Yeah. Is that where we should head next? Well... Or should we wait for him to just show up here? We'll probably just sit here for a little bit, see if he'll show up. Alright, sounds good. While we're waiting, do you guys need any health potions? I got I some I have for plenty. You. I don't know if health potions will do anything for me, but maybe Nevaeh there needs some. Nevaeh, do you need a health potion? Uh, normally I can hear myself, but uh, maybe you should. Have one or two. Maybe you should consult your tree. That's as fair. I like the way you think. And he pulls out Sir Lanford, and Sir Lanford says signs point to yes, and so he looks over at Crown's like, it might be good to have one. All right, here I hand you a regular health potion. No, thank you very much. Perfect. And with that, so if you want Fifth or Jonathan, I have a whole set thing planned for you. I started to get kind of late, 11.30. It's up to you guys on if you want to play through that or if you want to hit that next time. Jonathan, you didn't get a lot of screen time today. That's fine. Barta, did you want a health potion? Did you is want it a... a potion of healing? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah it's a potion yeah. of healing. Okay, thank you. We can test to see if it works. <laughs> uh, sure. Well, I guess I'll take one. That that seems logical. If nothing else, I'll have one on hand if I have to force it down one of your throats. So. All right. I'm gonna hand you a regular potion. Do potions not work for? No, they do Oh, okay. Yeah, they do. Well, do you want that to test it playing, to make yeah. sure? I can. No, that's fine. Throw my. Sp Wait, I don't have a spear. <laughs> Did I give you my trident, right? Yep. And I left it behind. Not there anymore. <laughs> into the ground. I just realized I didn't take it out of my bag, out of my person. Do we know the name of this follower, Ezra? Uh, it's not so much a follower as it is a following. There's, there is a a group that follows them. 
Okay, do we have a name? Shilrak, I think, is what he said, isn't it? Yes, the followers of Shilrak. I, I do not know their <laughs> specific name as far as what they call themselves. <laughs> they shill. <laughs> They're shills. <laughs> I mean, okay. So they're like shills for Shilrak. They could be. <laughs> they they weren't, but they are now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Are they friendly? I in this town? I believe so. I I I cannot say. I I read about them in a book that when I was doing some research to find out what was happening with with Abner and trying to find out more about his staff and, and other things that you mentioned as you explored him from what you told me. And I found out that there is or was a following of Shilrak from long from well, the book wasn't super long, super old, but long enough that it didn't have a lot. It wouldn't have any pertinent information on on modern times. Okay. How long has this book been out? Uh, he thinks about it for a second, and then he goes to his bag and he pulls it out. Looks through. Looks at. Looks like it was written in the last uh, fifty years. So, for an elf, that's nothing. So for them, it may be. It may be alive. It very likely is alive and well. For elves have very long memories. With their yeah. exceptionally long lives. Oh yeah. Hey, Ezra. Yes? I think I agreed to let you run some experiments or something on me. <laughs> of course. Um, I mean, yes, of course. Let us... If you guys all want to stay around for a while, we shall be good. There, no, no harm will befall you as we... As I... Poke around, so to speak. But right. I would like to Fair. see what you can find. Sure, have it. I'll cooperate, I guess. You've, All right. you've been awfully useful and helpful to us thus far, and we're waiting for fifth anyways, so have at it. All right. And at this point, we could probably segue over to Jonathan. And... Yeah. We can also wrap up since it's late. <laughs> yeah, sure. if you guys want, we can end it now, and then we that can That means start we're starting with you, and you're not here at the beginning. All oh, right. We can do a ceremony off screen. <laughs> All right, I mean, gotta come, I don't know how long get us, and it. then we can do the. Just come tell us we got to do the ceremony, and then we'll come join you, and then we can pick up from there. That works too. <laughs> and and then while we're waiting for you, for we can ceremony? be all prepping for. I don't think Fifth would want to bring everyone to the ceremony. No. Nope. How fast is the ceremony thing? But what is wife? How fast what, is the ceremony would, thing? With crumbs and all the other distract, distracting PCs out of the scene, probably not that. Yeah. Okay, I mean, if we, we want to play it, we can play it out. Alright, we can go really quick. It's not that late for me, it's late for you guys. <laughs> well, before we head over there, I go, Hrock! Yeah. Bring me some wine. <laughs> Give me white wine, please. Um. What? What about mostly white? Mostly white's good. <laughs> Just bring me All the right. good stuff. <laughs> All right. And then he'll bring that to you, and then Ezra will go off and do his stuff, and we'll transition over to Jonathan. Okay. Okay. Um so you and Elba make it over to the to the town hall and you walk into the you walk in and are greeted by one of the one of the servants that's there. Oh 
Lord, Lord, well, soon to be Lord Fifth. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, yeah, yes, thank you. Um, I believe Lady Niece is expecting you. Ah, excellent. Where should I... To, 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 to her office? Or... Yes, just follow me. I will take you. I will oh, take you excellent. Yes. right Very away. Kind. Appreciate it. So she walks you both over to the to the office and then knocks on the door slightly. Come in. And the servant opens the door and just gestures you in. I believe she just has a, a few business items to take care of and then I, I'll let the count I will let the the council know that you're ready for the, the ceremony and we'll proceed at that point. Uh, excellent. Thank you. All right. So you walk in and then he looks at you. Oh, thank, thank you for coming. Um, Mr. Fifth and, and Lady Elaba. Um, she looks around. Is, you, you didn't bring the, uh, your friend uh, a crumb, did you? Uh, no. Did you okay. want us to no. bring him? No. No. Okay. Is, no. <laughs> he, he would just cause problems. Okay. <laughs> well, I have I have some paperwork for you to sign and and we need to have our we need to have the um the notary of of the town come in. So give me one second and I'll call him in. And he walks out and then talks to the servant that's there. And after a couple of minutes, uh, this really tall um, high elf walks in. Why, hello. You're looking for a notary. Oh, yes. Yes, for, for our, new, our new lord. Why, very well. And she goes to her desk and she pulls out a whole bunch of papers and she hands them to you. Fifth. With a quill and ink. All right, if you... And and your your lovely wife can can sign these and will be almost complete and you'll officially have the Lord status. Uh, excellent. Yes. Uh, fifth reads over the papers and signs where he's supposed to. All right. As right after that's done, then the the notary looks up at you. Very well. You you do agree that you are. Hereby, potentially, the ownership and the true rightful lord of the lord of the estate, so long as as it pertains to the lease of the great king that sits in Rairia, up to the north. I appreciate you. Everything looks in order. As she looks, as he looks through everything. Excellent. Well, I will take that. You must get ready for the ceremony, and everything will be all official. And he walks out, and then and niece looks at you, um, Mister Mister Fifth. I, I'm afraid there's something that you may not like about this ceremony. Uh. And she pulls out this like absolutely hideous suit. This is the true dress for upcoming lords. It is the true dress attire for accepting the title. And it's just this ugly, like, purple and pink suit with, like, the big, like, poofy round hat that you'd see in, like, the old, like, Spanish days in, like, the 1400s. And she has, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to ask this of you, but it's tradition for the new lords to, to dress in this attire as they present themselves to the council. Okay. And then she she also hands a, another dress to to Elva and repeats the same thing. This is this is something that needs to happen for tradition. Is there um anything special about this, or is it just just a a suit? It's there's it's just a ceremonial position. I you understand traditions and and everything else. Every every new Every new lord has to go through this. They must put on the put on the dress and put on the outfit and then once you get into the ceremony there will be a short speech made by the matriarch of the town followed by 
a brief toast to all that are in there, and then you will be officially and properly the new lord of the manor. Oh yes. Um, where where should we where should we change? Um, if you don't mind, I can leave, and if you don't mind changing together in here, that will suffice. If not, I can find I can find another room for you. I uh, know this this should be fine. Very well. And so he leaves the clo- they leave the clothes. Or she leaves the clothes in there, and then walks out. Okay. I mean. Uh, this is mildly disgruntled, but he'll change into it. <laughs> Great. I don't have a good picture of it, of what I actually have in my mind, but like, yeah. So it's like the whole like ginormous like poofy sleeves and like in my head it's like <laughs> bronze dress robes in the Harry Potter movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or pretty much. Like that. <laughs> And then, like the like the hats, like the big giant, like circular, like poofy hats. Great. It's like kind of flat, but like it's yeah. Cool. So she gives you a couple. Se- she gives you a couple minutes to change, and then she walks back and knocks on the door. Are Are you ready, Mister Fifth? Uh, are we ready? Did Delba change? Did Fifth change? Yeah. Yes, we're ready. <laughs> Yes, we're we're ready. Let, let's go. The elbow looks up at you. I I know this is awkward, but I do remember father had to go through the same thing as well as mother when when dear old grandpa died. I I'm sorry I didn't tell you this before. I was afraid you were going to be scared. You'd be angry. But this is going to well. You you look pretty to me at least. Well, <laughs> it's it's not the problem. Not now. I'm flipping. <laughs> it's not. It's not a problem. <laughs> I don't know if it's just like the time of day that we play. I don't know. You I didn't just, get at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Let me. Uh, let me put my head into. It's not a problem. It's not. It's not a problem. It's not. <laughs> Flipping it's not a problem. problem. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> there, there is no problem, problem here. I can't do it. Oh, I can't do the accent. It's not a problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay. Well. I. Okay. Perfect. Well then, then let's go into the the court and and get this over with. I, I'm kind of afraid of what. The others will have done in your absence. They aren't the, the, the sharpest tools in the shed. Oh, she is with them. It oh, seems, right. It, it seems Sp- Sparta is that Sparta seems fine. Sparta, the, the person that's been alive for a week, that's only had crumb to, to, to learn about the world from. Yes, and I'm sure it'll be great. Seems perfectly fine. Yes, that works. <laughs> Surprised Nisa already kn- knows all that. Well, no, this is Elba. This is Elba. And... That's oh. Elba. Yeah. That was Elba. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's hard for me to talk to myself, so Jared's. I understand it. The voice just wasn't the Elba voice. So I thought it was. Nice. Well, sometimes it's I don't a, remember a... the voice. Okay, just deal it's, with it. It was just. A, it was a calmed <laughs> down Elba for when they're alone. Got it. <laughs> It's a more grounded elbow when they're alone. <laughs> okay, my bad. <laughs> Get the All right, well, let's let's go then, Fifth. And then she would open the door to to go up to Nice. And Nice looks up at both of you. Very very well. You look you look excellent. Lady Elba, and you also look good as as well, um, uh, Mr. Fifth. Or rather, I should say, Lord Grimesporth, for after signing those papers officially, you have a, you will have to adopt the surname of Grimesporth in Indeed. order to be an honorific member of the family as the new Lord of the estate. I, I have 
already adopted the. I have, oh, oh my gosh! Yes, I've already adopted the. <laughs> oh my goodness! The wrong yes, answer. I've already. Yes, I've already adopted the last name of my wife. <laughs> 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 Very well. Very well, uh, Lord Grimesborn. Yes, I've well. already taken her name. Let <laughs> 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 us uh, let us go inside the council. They are they are all expecting you. I I believe they're working through some other some other issues at the moment. But as soon as we walk in, they should be able to. Put those aside until we're able to finish finish the ceremony. Excellent. So le- she leads you back into the courtroom where you first started. The one that you're very familiar with. Is that's, that's where you were when you were locked up in chains and caught initially. And as you walk in, you I'm hear... In element. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you walk in and you hear an arguing... And the the educator for for the meeting slams his gavel and says, "Here, here! I don't know what we were going to do, but we must do something." And then one of the lords stands up and pipes up, "Yeah, there's been five dead things that's come up just today. What do we do? What is going on here?" And he slams the gavel down again. Here, I don't. We don't know. We've never experienced. Uh, uh, <clears throat> my my lords and my ladies, we must. We must curb this discussion until after the ceremony, for Lady, Lady Elva and Lord Fifth, Lord Grimesborth, has has come to grace us with their presence. We must proceed with the the a Lord ceremony at once, so they can fill the void that was left by dear Lord Grimesborth, the Elder. Everyone, all have a moment of silence for the for, for the fallen Lord. And the whole, um, the whole ensemble goes silent for a minute as they, as they're all quiet and and bow their head in respect. And you you can feel, um, Elaba fifth. You can feel her kind of fidget, kind of nervously, when this happens. And she but she's able to hold it together. But she feels visibly nervous at the at the talk of her father dying. Fifth, fifth uh, puts the paw on her shoulder. She kind of like calms down a little bit, and then the educator speaks up. Very well, Miss Lord Fifth and Lady Elba, please walk to the front. Okay, then, we go. We do. As you we walk up to the front, and then he he, he gestures over to this old lady. And says, now, a few words from old matriarch Shillenby. And I'm not going to roleplay it, but she she goes on for a good five to ten minutes about the responsibilities of a lord and how you have a responsibility to your constituents as well as your house and your family and, and your... And your town and the crown of the crown in Raira to honor and protect them as best you can. And then she looks down at the two of you. Do you accept these conditions, these promises, and all manner of things which has been said this day, Lord Grimsborough? Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I-, I do. Yes. And do you, Lady Elva, support your husband and all of the things which has been said this day? And then she looks up. Yes, I, d- I do. Very well. And she turns over and she grabs um, two goblets of wine and she brings it up to you, Fifth and Elva. You must drink this to solidify the promises made herein. As you drink this, it is in, is hope for prosperous future and for a good time all around. <laughs> and she, one, one <laughs> of the years, which is 
<laughs> uh, yeah, he, he drinks it. <laughs> Very well. And she takes the cups back from you. By the power vested by me and by this council, should there be no objections, then we shall officially and properly hereby announce the lordship of fifth arpeggio the fifth. What's your name? We don't. We never actually got your full name. Just that would be arpeggio Grimsboris. Very well. Also known as Fifth. Fifth Arpeggio Grimsporeth, also known as Fifth, is hereby the Lord of the Manor with his loving wife, Elabar. Uh, uh, excuse me, Elabar. And then the court is silent for a few seconds and they start to cheer. And then everyone's all. Everyone graciously accepts you as the educator call, bangs this gavel down. Here, here. Well, now that that's over with, uh, Fifth and Eleva, you are dismissed. Should you, in other, in other days, you may need to be, participate in this council, but as for now, you are dismissed to go about your, to go about your day. We will send someone to one of your servants to have the minutes of this meeting. So you can know what is decided. Unless you have any input into what has been said, you are you are dismissed to leave. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Please do send right. word if uh, uh, the next time, uh, if I am needed, the next time you convene. <laughs> Very well. And uh, Elva kind of corrected to him. Thank you, everybody, for your humble and gracious acceptance. My, my husband and I will do everything we can to l fill the giant shoes of my father. And then she walks out. Well, that's assuming you walk out with her. Yeah, we, we leave. Okay. All right. So after you you do that, and the niece kind of greets you, to let us go. And uh, I don't want to tell them that I may be responsible for the uh, <laughs> driving themselves. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you leave, and and niece kind of catches you and says, "All right. Well, everything has been done, and at this point, there's there's nothing more that um is needed. Your your um servant Howard." Howard Goshock, he came by earlier to, he had some questions about, about the books and some discrepancies, and, and I've looked into it as well, and I, I believe there may be something as well that we'll, we may want to discuss at a future date, once we have some more things nailed down, but there may be something that may be a benefit to you as well as, as well as to the city. Ah, excellent. I uh Look forward to hearing more. Very well. And just, when, when you're done with your ceremonial robes, if you could send them back to us, we need to get them cleaned. Can, can, can I be done with them now? <laughs> I mean, if you want to, I, I, I think you look pretty good office? in it. Could we use your office well. again? Yes, 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 very well, very well. And then you go back, you get changed, you come back out. And then she she bids you goodbye and says, Until we speak again, Lord Fifth, it has been a pleasure. Ah, yes. Uh, thank you, niece. All right. And you leave, and you walk out of the town hall. Officially, the Lord of the Grimesworth Estate. All right. And then I head back to the tavern. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's where we will officially end it. All righty. Okay. All Woo! right. Bye, viewers. Bye. Bye, viewers. Bye. Thanks for playing.
by future selves. Boom, boom. boom. <laughs>